You guys ready to stir the pot this morning? Just stir away with something controversial. I like controversy when it's done in an adult fashion where we have a conversation. So today we're diving into true endings and video games because I know this has been something fairly controversial around Dragon's Dogma 2. And uh, there's a great Reddit thread that I found, which has, a, I'm not going to read through all the comments here, but I am going to link this down below, talking about how true endings in video games have become a huge red flag in terms of people wanting to put time into them and et cetera. It's a great discussion. Uh, we're going to dip our toes a little bit into this uh, because I think it's very interesting. And I've got some of my own commentary to add because, um, yeah, well, we'll get, to, we'll get to that at the end. So... Um, again, I'll have a link to this, but we're going to read through it real quick so that you have some context. Uh, it's, this individual says, Lately I've started to notice that most games I see have multiple endings in some form, and they tend to implement them in the most frustrating way possible that's made me wary of any other game that has them. The format I see most adopted is having one or more normal or bad endings that are often of lower quality and don't let you see all of the end game content, and only one true ending with certain requirements that is actually more satisfying and well written in comparison. And while the concept of having a better or more complete ending, by the way, I'm going to call that a canon ending, is actually a good thing, um, and it makes sense if it's done that way. The problem is when it's nearly impossible to meet all of these weird uh, and obscure requirements on a blind playthrough. And that could be something that is probably the point for um, the developer to create interesting secrets for player to discover. But the practice ends up being a big problem when the true ending is the only ending that a subset of the community focus on or that's the only one that they find worthwhile now i'm not going to read the second part of their comment um, right now because uh, there's actually a whole bunch of there's a whole bunch of stuff in here uh, to unpack and there's a great discussion if you want to dive into the deep end but what i want to do is i want to take a stop at where they just left off um, when it comes to these true endings if you're doing a blind playthrough which is what i did um, and if you like, it's what Mortissimal Gaming did as well, I believe. Um, it's nearly impossible to meet all of the obscure requirements on a blind playthrough. That's a, that's a very good commentary. So there are no markers in Dragon's Dogma 2 telling you that this is a main quest versus this is a side quest. You just go do quests. And that's what I was doing. And I was streaming all of it. I was anticipating, and if you go back to the videos that I made at the beginning before I had ever started the game, I said I was anticipating a 50 to 60 hour minimum playthrough, and I was hopefully going to get more out of it if that was the case. It turned out that that was not the case, because I, in the process of playing the game and following the storylines that I found interesting, ended up, and you can see this if you watch the last stream I did, most of my streams were three to four hours long, and I think it was session nine. Um, we were literally like an hour and 20 minutes in, and suddenly I beat the dragon, and it was like I'm in the throne room, and I'm getting coordinated, and there's credits rolling, and it's like I feel like the John Travolta meme from, from Pulp Fiction. You know, I'm like looking around going, is that it? Like, was that it? And it turns out that wasn't it. First and foremost, there's a New Game Plus mode, which is what I'm doing. I made a video about the New Game Plus mode. In the process of making those two videos, I found myself getting lots of commentary from a vocal minority of players who were ranting about this thing called a true ending and how I didn't give Dragon's Dogma 2 enough time and I didn't actually play the game because I rushed it and I was just trying to get views on YouTube. Duh, I'm a content creator first and foremost, but that's completely taken out of context. Watch any of my playthroughs of the games that I play. I tend to do 50 to 60 hour gameplays. Cyberpunk 2070 first time was like, Cyberpunk 2077, I should say. Um, first time was like 60 hours. Uh, Rogue Trader, I don't even know how many hours I got in that one. A lot. Pathfinder 1 and 2, 100 plus. Pillars of Eternity 1 and 2, 100 plus. Baldur's Gate 3, 100 plus. I could list the amount of games that I play on my channel publicly for people where I do more than 100 hours in the games that I play. It is not my fault that the game design has some sort of hidden ending 
that a subset of the community is considering the true ending because it's the best ending. And if you didn't do the best ending, you didn't actually play the game. Um, so I read this Reddit thread and I went, wow, I completely understand where this player is coming from because there seems to be um, this problem wherein a certain group of people believe that the secret endings are the true endings and the only ones that are worth playing because they're like, look at all the development time that went into this. There's obviously this is supposed to be the best. And in some cases, you have developers who have flat out come out and said, oh, yeah, well, you're supposed to. This is the canon ending, which is what Mass Effect three was it was like this is the canon ending even though you can have all these other endings and i haven't dug deep enough into this conversation yet in terms of knowing what what capcom's official stance is on this um, in terms of are the developers out there claiming that the secret ending is the true ending and that's the only ending you should be going for and all the other endings are trash because i don't think that i've never seen that in any of the press material that i've uh, watched around Dragon's Dogma 2, but I'm also not obsessed with Dragon's Dogma 2. I play a lot of video games, right? So um, it's just that's my job. I play video games. I cover, I do first impressions, I do sponsored stuff, I do lots of different things. I am a content creator and streamer. That's my job. So the idea that you have to be like hypnotized by one game and only one game to the point where you're obsessing on every single little thing that the developers say and that's the only way you're ever going to know that there's this secret ending that you need to be playing because i'll tell you what at no point in the game when i was playing dragon's dogma 2 was i ever led to believe that there was a secret ending or a true ending i got to the end of the game i'm in a throne room there's credits rolling i've apparently been you know i've i've ousted the fake arisen now I am the leader and the ruler, and that's it. And then all of a sudden you've got all these people say, no, you should have done this, and if you did this and this, it would have done this, and you would have gotten into this, which is the true ending, and, 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 and I'm puzzled. I am genuinely puzzled, which, which led me to research this morning was, is this a thing? Is this a thing where people go around you know, bitching and moaning about whether somebody did or didn't do the true ending and whether or not that's considered... A legitimate playthrough because apparently what I'm being told by a vocal minority is that my playthrough of Dragon's Dogma 2 wasn't legitimate because I beat the game in 30 hours. I can't help it that there was no labels telling me that this was the main quest. I was just out there having fun, genuinely, genuinely anticipating getting a 60 hour playthrough of my first time through the game only to find out that, oh, apparently that was it and now I've got to go and do New Game Plus if I want to go experience all the side quests that I missed the first time, which is okay. I, on the one hand, it's okay because that gives me a chance to go through and, and do a second playthrough, assuming I would want to, which I don't. I don't feel the urge to go to a completionist game of a completionist version of that game at this point in time. I've, I've done it once. Cool. Maybe in a year or two I'll go back. Um, I don't immediately turn around and do second and third playthroughs of games because as a content creator and streamer, my job is to cover news and relevant titles so i play something i move on and i play the next thing i move on and I play the next thing sometimes it's going to be a 40 hour playthrough sometimes it's going to be a 60 hour playthrough sometimes it's going to be a 120 hour playthrough just was an amazing game that i think i beat in like eight hours um i've looked at i haven't done a hellblade one yet i'm getting ready to do hellblade one i've told that's very shoot i just did um a first impressions video the other day of bramble the mountain king which i've been told is like a six to eight hour experience i'm totally going to go play that and it's like the time it takes to complete a game is by no means indicative of whether or not you've completed the game. If a game provides you with multiple endings, quick commercial break everyone to celebrate and give thanks to all of these amazing people who keep me on the air full time. Really appreciate the support. All you got to do is join as a member. You get access to private videos. You can also do super thanks on any upload or super chats and stickers on any live stream or premiere you see. And beyond that, don't forget we're multi-streaming over on Twitch now so you can support over there as well. Thanks so much to everybody. Let's get back to the video at hand then all of those are legitimate endings. The idea that there's only one true ending, I just find to be a little bit ridiculous, especially when you have a game that has made it so obscure as to not tell you anything about the quests, because Dragon's Dogma doesn't do any hand-holding. There's nothing to indicate that this is a main quest versus this being a side quest. You're just off talking to people. Some are probably a little bit more evident, you know, like, go, go, go look, 
for this thing in the cave, like, yeah, that's a side quest. Like, you know, that's obviously not part of the main gig. But, you know, the idea that you have to have this roadmap of specific things that you need to know in advance um, and there's some obscure little details that you would either only know through like data mining or you were in the beta and or you watched a guide or something like that like I did a blind playthrough of a game and my ending is my ending uh, I don't think that anyone out there has the right to dictate to me whether or not my ending was legitimate or not based on the time it took me to get there I had fun I played the game I was genuinely surprised it took me half the time that I had planned but hey, I'm off to the next thing now because apparently I have, you know, an extra week in my schedule now, which is never a bad thing because I never have enough free time. So, yeah. Anyway, rant, discussion, call this what you will. I found it fascinating to look through the commentary on this Reddit thread. So I would say if you have time, I'm going to leave that down below and you can go look through this discussion on True Video, True Endings in Video Games and how they have become a red flag for this person. Um it was very interesting, and it and it like got me, you know, not triggered in a bad way, but it triggered my association with what is the fascination that some people have in this. And let's look into this further. Um, and I'm falling firmly in the fence of great games have lots of endings. Baldur's Gate three has lots of endings. Pillars of Eternity lots of endings. Dragon Age Origins lots of endings. Dragon's Dogma two lots of endings. There's no such thing as a true ending um there is definitely you know the urge from the developer to make a statement in some cases as to you know this is the canon ending uh but that's about the only scenario i would think where we could legitimately say well yeah that's actually but even in those cases like the mass effect 3 thing it was like technically all of them are valid endings unless you go off and play andromeda and or whatever is coming next then they have to pick they have to actually make a statement about what's the official canon ending um i i don't know like fascinating discussion point if you found it fascinating and you like my approach to things stick around for more like subscribe hit the bell icon daily streams here and on twitch i play a lot of games as i mentioned in this video there's a discord there's a patreon i write sci-fi and fantasy Links down there. See you next time, everybody. And yeah, I still have more guides coming for Dragon's Dogma too. So if you're on board with that, let's do it.